What's going on everyone? It's Phil the Harness Doctor. Today we're going to be working on this 2020 Sierra 2500 HD truck. This customer brought this truck to me with manual driver and passenger seats and the customer did pick up some AT4 seats from the 19 to 22 year range and we're looking to get these installed. If you've been following the channel, I did show some videos previously on how to install uh, Denali High Country LTZ seats, AT4 seats, seats with the memory module, uh, and I show how to actually uh, bypass the memory module using the harness. But in today's video, I wanted to show you the detailed installation of the floor side harness. And so as we look at the floor connection here, when we unplug the seat, this is the power seat, the floor side connection will be missing the pins needed for this install. So uh, as we look at this connector here, the top left cavity up here, this top left corner is empty, the top right corner is empty, and then the one below the top right corner, this middle pin is empty. And as we look at the connection, uh, we've got ground here, main seat power, which is for the main controls on this bottom pin, and then the one uh, beneath it will be the power for the lumbar. So again, as we look at this floor side connector, it'll be top left will be the ground, top right will be main seat power, and then the bottom middle will be the lumbar. And so in my previous video, the truck I was working on had the ground wire already here. And so for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna show you the full installation of how to route and install the wire harness on the floor side and where it needs to land in the fuse panel. Now, for some reason, GM is sharing the lumbar power between the passenger and the driver's seat here in this fuse panel. And so I'm gonna show you how to run that, where to land it, and if you are in a situation where you already have an existing wire in the fuse panel, um, how to splice it, or with my harnesses, if you're missing the lumbar for both seats, then I'm gonna design the harness so that you'll be able to land both of the lumbar. Now, the main power for the seats does not land or terminate in this fuse panel. It actually runs across the dash all the way to the driver fuse panel. And so as we go through the installation, we'll go through some of the things that I found in the differences with how these trucks are built from GM. So when we go to remove this fuse panel, and I'll show this to you as we go through the install, but essentially this fuse panel here, you can see that this fuse panel has your large wires landed on both sides of the fuse panel, which means the left half and the right half of this fuse panel bus are both hot. On some trucks, when we look at it, only one side is hot. So uh, if we want to use the factory fuse location for the passenger seat, if your truck has the wire missing, then we have to find an open slot on the side that has power. So we'll go through that in detail, but we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to remove the seat so we can get the connector on the floor ready for the harness insertion. Let's talk about the tools needed to install this harness. You'll need a Torx T50 to remove the seat, a 10 millimeter socket to land the ground uh, ring onto the existing uh, ground stud. You'll need a small flat blade screwdriver so that you can prepare the connector for terminal insertion. You'll need a pick tool to remove the silicone plugs on the connector, some zip tie cutters, and a 30 amp fuse so that we can land the main power wire, which is this red wire, on the driver fuse panel. So let's go ahead and get the seat removed. To remove the seat, you want to remove the cover. Uh, the customer already removed the cover here, but this trim piece essentially just pops up and off. To get to the seat connector, there's going to be a red tab that's pushed in. You want to pull that red tab back towards you. And then the top left corner and the bottom right corner, you wanna push these tabs inwards towards the middle of the connector while sliding the connector housing backwards. And now that should disconnect. This harness may be zip tied and attached to the frame. So just make sure you either cut the zip tie or use a uh, connector removal tool and just pop that off. 
remove the four Torx T50 bolts. There's two on each side and take the seat out. With the seat out, you want to pop the connector off the floor and there's a tab down below. Lift this tab up and slide that connector out. If you want, you can pull the harness from the retention clips here and here to get gain more access. The ground bolt will be right there. So you want to lift the carpet or the vinyl as high as you can. That bolt back there is a 10 millimeter bolt and that's where we're going to land our ring terminal. And let me see if I can get some more slack by removing these clips to access the back side of this connector. If you remove the door sill, that may give you some more uh, leverage to get the vinyl up or the carpet up. And then you can see there the uh, existing ground I removed. And now we can actually access the connector, uh, cut the zip tie off and pry open all these tabs. Uh, take note of the orientation of the housing points to the right. So that when we put this back in, we put it back in the same way. Take the yellow cover off. And as we're looking at this with the clip on the bottom, it's gonna be this top left, top right, and the middle. And using your pick tool, you want to remove these silicone plugs. Just like that. On the inside, see if I can zoom in for you here. There's gonna be a blue tab in this slot right there. So with your flat blade screwdriver, you want to get it in there and pop that blue tab. You want to pop that blue tab downward. So let's see if I can do this for you here. You want to get your screwdriver in there. And pop it down. You hear it, you'll hear it click. So now it's in the down position. And what that does is once the silicone plugs are removed, you can now insert the male pins into their corresponding positions. Once you get all three pins landed, be sure to lock that terminal position assurance or TPA lock back upward. Otherwise, you will not be able to connect the seat connector to that correctly. So let me get those pins landed for you now. So this is what it's gonna look like once you're landed. So the black ground will be pin position number one, top left corner. Your red main seat power will be position number 13, top right corner. And then your pink will be your lumbar, and that's position 29, which would be this bottom, uh, or I'm sorry, middle right. And so one, 13, and 29. And the harness will have those position numbers labeled, but this is what it looks like. So once you get the pins in, remember, don't forget to lock the TPA. We'll get this wrapped up, routed. The ground wire landed. You'll have a ground ring lug to land and just use the existing ground there. We'll get everything routed through the door sill and we'll end up in this passenger side fuse panel. One thing I wanted to note, if your truck currently has any of the pins that you're looking to add already present, uh, there are some trucks that have the ground wire already here, so just omit that off my harness, tape it back, land what, what you do need and what is missing. So uh, everything's put back together. That's what the connector looks like. We've got everything zip tied and cleaned up. Our ground wire is landed. Now we're gonna continue with the wire harness down the door sill. Once you get to this part, you're gonna leave the larger spool of the red wire uh, coiled in the footwell, the pink wire set will land in this passenger fuse panel. So what I've done here is I've included a pin for the lumbar as well as an optional spade. And so what this is gonna do, because GM shares the lumbar circuit on this connector, this pin will land into the connector and this pin will have a splice so that we can take the power from the driver lumbar and bring it over to this and plug it into this. So if you are doing this install and your connector already has the wire for the lumbar for the driver's seat, so say you already have a driver powered seat and you're doing the passenger power, you're already gonna have a wire in that position 
where this is supposed to land. So this is gonna land on position 30 on this connector. So if you are doing this install and you have a power driver seat with lumbar, instead of being able to land this pin, you're gonna have to cut this pin and splice this wire into the existing wire that's driving the driver side lumbar power, okay? So in that situation, you can tape back the spade here and it won't be used. But for this install, we're actually gonna use both because this one will not have the lumbar. We're gonna land the lumbar and we'll leave this down here somewhere uh, so that when we install the driver's seat, we can bring the other side of this from the driver's seat and get that mated together to this connector. To remove this connector, you wanna lift the red tab up, push in here on the connector and lift the white lever upwards. And that should allow you to unplug this connector. This white faceplate, if you want to remove that, you can remove it and actually see the pin position numbers printed on the board. Uh, but again, we're gonna be pin 30 on this one. Uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna remove this lever. We'll remove the back cover so that we can get the pin landed. So to remove this lever, just simply pry from the sides on both sides and we'll get this off, cut the zip tie, and then down here, we'll pry this connector off. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll be right back. Once you get the connector ready for terminal insertion, one last thing you want to do on this is if you turn it to this side, this brown TPA, you want to pry that out. And what that does is it actually holds the pins in. So using a flat blade screwdriver, just carefully pry it out. Let's see if I can do this one handed here for you. Yep, just like that. All right, so now that this connector is ready, the position that we're going to want is position 30. And if you're looking at this connector, uh, it's gonna be not this, this bottom row, uh, not the first one, but this second one. There's gonna be a violet wire, at least in this connector. Let's zoom in here for you. So it's gonna be this position right there. That's position 30. And if I show you the fuse panel with that cover or the white faceplate removed, you can see that position 30 is located right there. So it's the third one up from the right. And as we look at this connector, it'll be the third one up from the right. One, two, and three. And simply take the pin and insert it. It only goes in one way uh, where the tangs are vertical to the connector. So just insert it like so. And as you're inserting it, uh, you'll hear it click once you get it pushed all the way forward. A little difficult doing this one-handed. Switch hands here. just like that. Give it a little tug, take a look at it, and just make sure that the pin is all the way forward. Put your TPA back in, tape your harness down, put the cover back on, put the latch back on, and you can plug it in. That's what it looks like when you're all done. And as I mentioned earlier, if you do have a current powered driver seat, you're gonna see this wire already present from the driver's side. So in that event, if you are in a situation where this wire is already here, you'll want to peel this tape back and on my harness, cut the pin off and splice it into that wire. And I do have a splicing video on my channel if you're interested in, in how I perform wire splices uh, so that you can get the power. So again, GM shares the power circuit for the lumbar for both driver and passenger on this connector, position 30 on the passenger side fuse panel. So I will go ahead and get this all buttoned up. The spade for the driver's seat will leave hanging in this area until it comes time to install the driver's seat. We've got the connector back in place. We're gonna leave the pink spade here. For the red wire, we're gonna continue this run along the dash over to the driver's side fuse panel. There should be an existing wire harness down here that you can simply zip tie it to run it across the dash and over to the driver's side fuse panel. So I will go and get that done now, and then we'll come back for the remaining install. Once you get the red wire routed to the driver's side fuse panel, remove the fuse panel by simply pressing on the tab on the left side and, and pulling the fuse panel out. Uh, it clips in from the uh, bottom at an angle. So just pop it out. We wanna access the backside of this 
And to do that, you want to release these clips here on the side with a small flat blade screwdriver. Let me go ahead and do that now. With the back cover removed, you're gonna to wanna to land this wire to position 44 on this fuse panel. Now, one thing that I wanna note that I did not show in the first video when I did this is we learned that some of these fuse panels do not have the main power landed on both sides of this fuse panel. So if I turn this around, you can see there is a main large wire coming in on one side and another large wire coming in on the other side. So as we're looking at it in this orientation, what we found is that the factory position, position 44, which is gonna be this slot right here, position 44, if you don't have this red wire landed and you land this pin, even with adding the fuse, you're not gonna have power. So in that, that situation, we wanna find an alternative spot on the right side. If you land this pin into this spot and you later learn that you don't have the wire and you don't have power, you will not be able to deep pin this terminal without special tools that are needed to access it from the front. So triple check that you do have power coming in on the left side of this so that position 44 is hot. If you don't have it, what we've done for other trucks is on the right half, we were simply using one of these spots up here. There's four positions. And if you turn this around, it will be one of these four positions here on the left. So I wanted to notate that. Uh, this left half in this orientation is hot with this main wire, but this side may not be on some truck. So please, please take note of that. So since we have power here, we're gonna land it into the factory position number 44, and then we'll add the 30 amp fuse on the uh, front side. All right, to land this wire, remove the left side white TPA. If you're doing the right side, because you don't have the power, remove the blue side TPA. Remove the TPA with the flathead screwdriver, grab your terminal and insert it into position 44. And it should be right there. Uh, terminal goes vertical just like that and insert it until it clicks. Give it a little tug, take a look at it from the front and there you have it. We're gonna route this just like so. We'll zip tie it, put the cover back on put the TPA back on, and then you'll need a 30 amp fuse to land across your terminals here. And this is the factory location that corresponds with the fuse panel designation. So I will get this cleaned up. We'll be right back. And we have the factory 30 amp fuse installed in the factory location. We'll put the fuse panel back cover back on and then we'll test the seat. All right, we've got the seat installed, plugged in. And we have power. Got recline working, and we've got the lumbar working. Well, there you have it, folks. The AT4 passenger seat installed on this 2020 Silverado 2500. I will get these wires cleaned up. I do have the driver's seat yet to install, so we're gonna go ahead and get that installed now. But if you have any questions on this installation, please leave them in the comments below. I'll leave a link in the description to purchase this harness on the website. Until next time, guys, this is Phil the Harness Doctor. We'll see you in the next one.